Blessed Resurrection Day, guys. I just wanted to get on here real quick and wish you guys a blessed, blessed Resurrection Day. Praise God that Christ has risen and has given us the keys over death, sin, and has given us the opportunity and the hope of everlasting life. Um, I have some notes because I just wanted to get on here and kind of just give my little background on why I choose Christ over religion, especially when it comes to the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, I've always had a personal um, fascination with spirituality. I've always had a deep, profound respect for the study of religions, spirituality, and schools of thought. Um, and I think it's because obviously there's a teacher, a spirit of teaching that I have. And because of that, I've always been a researcher and things like that. And so because I'm a lover and seeker of the truth and all things that are the truth, when I hear uh, someone speak the truth, it doesn't matter what necessarily religious title that they have. If they say something that resonates with my spirit as it being truth, then I will accept it as truth. Um, not necessarily their whole concept of their religion, but what they actually said in that moment of truth. And so um, with that being said, however, for me, I want to kind of give at least three reasons why I have chosen to follow Jesus Christ. And notice I didn't say to follow the religion of Christendom. I'm talking about our relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I do consider those things very different. Um, and uh, I know people can kind of combine the two, but for me and for those of us who are disciples of Christ, who are children of the Lord, we do look at that very differently by, from the religion of Christianity versus vices, an actual personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I gave, wrote down these three um, unique uh, perspectives of why I follow Christ because I want to share them with you so that you have a better understanding of um, those of us when we say that we are believers and we follow Christ and why we're so excited when it comes to um, resurrection. Um, so one of them is going to be that very thing of having a personal and intimate relationship with God. You know, it's it's amazing and to me, a little humorous when I do hear people talk about God in such a very generic term. Um, they, it doesn't mean I don't respect it. Um, but usually when I hear people say things like the universe or nature or things like that, it and they, and they make God very impersonal, it, I find it very interesting. And the reason why I do is because if you look at created beings, we're very personal creatures. <laughs> We have mother and child relationships. We have husband and wife relationships. We have grandparent and grandchildren relationships. And even though they can be dysfunctional and even traumatic at times, they're still very personal and intimate relationships. And if we claim to be created in the image and likeness of God, if we claim to be gods or little gods, then how would it be that an impersonal God would give us access and experience the experience of personal relationship and yet not be personal towards us. And so one of the things that I am thankful for, and one of the things for me that stands out about uh, Christ and when he came and lived on earth was that he came to show us two very important aspects. And one of those aspects was how man should relate and connect with God, their creator, and then also how God loved humanity so much that he came down and dawned on flesh so that he could live our experience. And then not only that, but save us from the, the hold and the grip, the death grip of sin. And so, you know, I don't know about you, but for me, I can't respect somebody who won't take a minute to walk in the shoes that I've walked in or to experience the pain and grief and turmoil that I've experienced and yet want to sit on that high horse and judge. And for me, 
I, I love that God himself, he could have sat in heaven on his throne and be like, look, all y'all sinners and all y'all going to go to hell. And I don't want to relate to none of y'all. And I don't want to empathize or sympathize with none of y'all. And you just need to have the strength to get through it. No, what he did was he came down as a human being and he subjected himself himself to our grief. It says, the word says he became a man of sorrows, one who was very well acquainted with grief. And so he walked in our shoes and he experienced the life that we moaned and groaned about to him through our prayers and through our cries to him. And he not only lived that life, but he lived it victoriously so that he could then return to give us the victory to now live and, and have victory over our own personal lives. And so I love that about God reflected through Jesus Christ that he, want, he loved us enough to not just sit there and watch us basically die and basically succumb to eternal damnation. But he said, you know what? I know I love my creation so much that I'm going to come down. I'm going to become um, one of them so that I can redeem them back so that we can have a right relationship again. And so no other religion that I'm aware of offers that same unique experience to have a personal, intimate relationship with God, with the one who created the heavens and the earth. No other religion that I've seen so far offers that. And um, that's what I love about Jesus. I, I want to be able to connect on a personal level, just as I want to connect with you guys on a personal level, just as I want to connect with my children on a personal level, just as I will eventually want to connect with my husband on a personal intimate level, the same should be said about our creator. And so the second thing that makes for me you, um, Christ so unique is that he gives us power over sin and he also promises us an abundant life and most importantly, peace. You know, y'all, we live in a broken world and the there have been things that have been done to us that have caused trauma, that have caused brokenness in our own personal life, be it through the choice of others or through our own choices. And oftentimes these traumas and this brokenness becomes a part of our identity in how we relate to the world, how we relate to one another, how our, our views are, our perspectives are, our mentalities, and how we live our lives. And a lot of these behaviors, if we're honest with ourselves, are very self-sabotaging, are very self-hindering, are very self-destructive. You know, And we often think to ourselves, man, I'm doing these self-destructing behaviors, these self-sabotaging behaviors. I have these self manipulating and deceiving thought processes, but I don't know how to get out of it. I don't know how to change. And what I love about Christ is he, he gives us that power to change and to actually, he gave us that power to, re, to release sin's grip off of our lives. And it's funny, you know, a lot of people will say that they're spiritual. A lot of times we'll call ourselves spiritual, but when you really get to the heart of what we believe and how we act, a lot of times it's still very carnal. It's still very fleshly. And so this shows me that sin is something more than just a thought of meditation or some sort of positive thinking that needs to be done or some sort of change of behavior. Because let me tell you something, the one thing that Christ dealt with a lot on earth was the motive behind the action. A lot of times we focus so much on the action and then we want to call ourselves spiritual, but we're really not focused on the heart of why we're doing what we're doing. And so because sin has this power over us, think of it like a death grip and a hold. So sometimes even when we want to do right, even when we want to live a better life, it's almost like it's like a ditch that we can't get out of. And so we're constantly clawing and trying to claw up the ditch, but there's no way that we keep falling back into the ditch. And Christ came to break that power. He came so that we could have the power. Not only he came to be that hand to lift us up out of the ditch. And so because of that, we can truly be free. Because of that, I can truly say that I'm delivered from a certain type of mentality or I'm delivered from a certain type of 
a thought process or, or, or a certain type of brokenness. Because a lot of times we need to be delivered from this stuff. Like we need it broken off of our lives. And uh, another thing too, we don't really understand the spiritual influence that plays into our natural lives. We tend to be very carnal minded and very physically minded. And a lot of things have a lot of spiritual roots that need to be pulled up and uplifted. And that's what Christ came to do. He came to uproot what's in us. I'm talking about down to our very core, down to our very core. He came to uproot that and came to break that chain off of us. So now we can live in the identity of who we were truly meant to live as children of God. And what people will try to do in their own strength is try to seek freedom or seek happiness or seek deliverance through things in other people. And we come to soon kind of realize that we, we can't find it in those things. And so Jesus promises not only the power to live a victorious life because at the end of the day that's i feel like that's what the majority of us want to do we want power over our lives we want victory over our lives and that's the very thing that jesus comes to offer is victory and power over our lives and not only that but he wants to give us an abundant life and please hear me out when i say abundant i don't mean in material possessions i don't mean in statuses and um things, material things. What I mean is a life of love, a life of joy, a life of peace, self-control, power, victory, um, all those things to me that are true blessings when it comes to one's life. Because let me tell you, you could have all the things in the world at the end of the day, but if you don't have joy and peace, if you don't have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, if you don't have self-control, then those things mean nothing because it's not things that can make you happy. It's not things that can set you free. We have to be set free by the spirit. It's our spirit man that needs to be set free. And once our spirit man is set free, then our natural man can live free. So no other religion really to me addresses or tackles that. They... I feel like either they try to, even the religion of Christendom, they try to dress it up. But as Jesus says, yeah, you're white on the outside, but on the inside, you're basically a coffin with dead man's bones in them. So Christ came to clean up the inside so that the outside could be right. And so that's to me something that only Christ can give. Only Christ can give power like that. Only Christ can deliver like that. Only Christ can save like that. So that's why when I hear it says no name under heaven, there was no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved except by the name of Jesus Christ, then that is why. It's because no other, no other person thing has the power. Guys, the power. The power to live a true spiritual life. Spirituality is not from the outside. True spirituality is being right with God. True spirituality is being free from sin. True spirituality is being delivered from death. That's what, true, that's what power is about. And so the third thing I want to talk about is the keeping and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And then most of all, the guarantee of eternal life. Y'all, if there's any one thing that I can thank God for on a, sometimes on a daily basis, honestly, y'all, is that I have the Holy Spirit. This by far has to be one of the most, to me, powerful things that I could thank God for is just his Holy Spirit. It's his Holy Spirit that guides me. Let me tell you, it's his Holy Spirit that will say a situation isn't right. It's his Holy Spirit that will give me a direct word that I need for that particular time, place, and, and location. It's his Holy Spirit that gives me the power to live a life of righteousness. It is not found within me and of myself. Because let me tell y'all something, y'all. Sometimes your girl want to go off. Sometimes your girl do go off. Sometimes your girl don't always want to do the right thing. I'm human. I'm imperfect. But y'all, it's the Holy Spirit that enables me. It's the Holy Spirit that empowers me. It's the Holy Spirit that guides me, that leads me. 
on a very personal level, going back to that personal relationship, that personal connection, that personal dealing with, it's the Holy Spirit. It's God's Spirit literally living inside of you, giving you the power to live the life that you were meant to live. Y'all, only the only reason why I can even sit here today and speak with you about anything or make any videos that I've made in the past or make any videos that I will make in the future is by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who moves me with compassion and passion and a fire and a zeal to be able to minister to you guys, to care enough to want to speak God's truth to care enough to want to see you delivered, to want to see you walking in abundance, to want to see you walking in victory. It's the Holy Spirit. It's because of the, I can do nothing without the Holy Spirit of God. And I take no credit for any of it. And y'all, it is that same spirit that at the end of time, that is going to be the one to raise me from death to life. It is that Holy Spirit. And so... At the end of the day, man's greatest desire and fight is going to be for immor immortality. Y'all, we do that through the creams that we want to put on to keep us from aging. We do that through healthy living. And it's because deep within us, there is a desire to be immortal. There is a desire to have eternal life, to live forever. And... I believe that this desire comes from the beginning when God created us. He created us. If he created us in his image and likeness, God is immortal. He doesn't die. Death is not a part of his nature. It's, it's in opposition to his nature. And so when we disobeyed, that's when death entered into humanity. And ever since then, we've been fighting and struggling against it in our own strength, not realizing that eternal life can only be given in submission to God. Eternal life can only be given. That's only a gift that God can give. We can't give it to ourselves. That's why I don't care how many times you replace your heart in surgery, you're going to die eventually. Because there's nothing man can do in his own works and efforts to, to grant himself eternal life. That has to be something that only God and his spirit can do. It is only, it's the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. And so he, when Christ died, he died to break the power of sin. But when he rose, he rose from death to break the power of death and to restore us back to the position of not only right relationship with him, not only victory in our lives, in our daily uh, actions, thoughts, and behaviors, but also the hope of eternal life. No religion, no school of thought, no spirituality can offer that. None. I respect them all. I believe there's truth in many of them. But at the end of the day, there is no name given to man by which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus Christ, Yahshua Amashiach, Yahoshua whatever you want to call him. It is Jesus. Isa is Jesus Christ. And so this is why I choose to follow Christ. This is why I'm compelled to minister to others because Jesus is the only one who can make us right with God, give us access back to God, have us reconcile back to the source so that we can have that personal, intimate relationship with the creator when he used to walk in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden and we were able to communion with him. No other person can offer us that. No other person can offer us power and victory over the, that brokenness, that curse that lives within us, that compels us to do wrong when even sometimes we want to do right. No other one can give us continuous victory if we submit to him. That's key. We have to submit to him. No other person can give us continuous victory over temptations and trials, things that come to sabotage and to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. Because let me tell you all something. The enemy, the enemy seeks to steal, kill, and destroy us because he knows of our inheritance. He knows what God has wants, desires for us 
plans to prosper us, give us hope in the future. And he plans to steal that. Christ came to break that power, to break the power of hell over our lives. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against his children. That it can only come by the power of God and through Christ his son. And not only that, but in, in part within us, that power through the Holy Spirit of God to empower us to live a life of victory. And not only that, to spread the good news to other people and to live the life that we always wanted. One of peace, joy, love, self-control, all those fruits of the spirit. And so I, I say this to say, if you do not know him and you are looking and seeking for those things, you're looking and seeking for communion with God to return back to the source, to have a personal intimate relationship with your creator. You're looking for power and victory over your life, to live an abundant life, a life of joy, peace, love, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, self-control. And also you want that daily guidance, that daily leading, that daily teaching, that daily uh, keeping that will keep you from lies and deception, that will enable you and empower you to walk in the true calling of who you are meant to be, then I implore you, Jesus, let me tell you something. Jesus says in Revelations 3, 20 through 22, he says, here I am. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right, the privilege to sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear what the spirit is saying to the church. This is what Christ is compelling and saying to anyone who will listen. Anyone who has ears to hear, this isn't for everybody because some don't have ears to hear. But if this resonates with your spirit and God has given you a, hear, a ear, my question to you is, will you answer that door? Will you invite him in? Will you let him sup with you and you with him? Will you allow him to give you the victory so that any situation that you have in your life that is dead, that is broken, that is defeated, can be resurrected just as Christ's body, physical body, yes, I believe that, his physical body was resurrected and given power. That your situation will may be resurrected and given, given power so that you can live a victorious life. Will you answer? Be blessed on today, y'all. Love you all.